Hi, my name is Brandon, and I'm an alcoholic and addict in recovery. Today, I wanted to talk about what to expect out of therapy and what not to expect out of therapy. A lot of people go to therapy expecting the kind of process that's typically shown on TV and movies and in popular culture. And a lot of people avoid therapy for the same reason, because they've seen this process in TVs and movies and they don't think it's for them. In reality, therapy is something that is a method of getting tools on how to deal with the challenges of day-to-day -day life. It's not a method by which you magically solve all those challenges. And uh, having an unrealistic view of what therapy does can often lead people to not pursue it at all or to prematurely cut it off because they feel like they're not getting out of it what they should, when in reality they just didn't really have a realistic expectation of what to expect. So I'm going to read a little bit from A Fuck Feelings by Dr. Michael I. Bennett and Sarah Bennett. Um, important to note that Dr. Bennett is a therapist, so uh, some of this comes from his experience in really what the job of the therapist is. So they say, many people think therapy is a deeply emotional, somewhat spooky process whereby a compassionate, supportive, Melfi gandalf hybrid therapist gets patients to recognize and experience painful thoughts, memories, and feelings. People assume this therapy gets at deeper reasons for emotional pain and irrational behavior and offers a more permanent and self-reliant solution to persistent unhappiness than just popping happy pills ever could. Unfortunately, therapy of that kind, like most treatments, is rarely a cure, sometimes totally ineffective, and frequently effective to a limited degree. In any case, insurers would rather pay for you to get a third arm attached to your back to better facilitate the scratching of your ass than cover any kind of frequent, endless, goalless therapy. As for getting at the root of issues, that's nice when it happens, but it usually only happens in movies with results that are equally unrealistic. In real life, most problems have many causes, and many of those causes can't be changed even with blinding insight or a good snotty cry. So if you expect that treatment will provide solutions, you'll feel like a failure. So it's really important to recognize that therapy is a means of getting tools to, to deal with some of the issues in life. And the best therapists that I've had, and I've had a few in my time, the best therapists that I have were interested in building up my toolbox of ways to deal with life and not curing me of anything. Uh, one of the, the therapy that's worked best for me in several different situations is cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, this is a therapy in my experience that has taught me how to reshape the way that I think about and approach challenges in life rather than obsessing about challenges in a very selfish and self-centered way, I am able to assess them in a more value-based approach. And that allows me to take down the obsession factor. Um, it allows me to uh, not engage in some of the compulsive behavior that comes with my, I, I have obsessive compulsive disorder. It allows me to um, uh, not engage in some of that compulsive behavior and approach things using the tools that have been provided to me rather than just what I feel like doing, which often is a recipe for disaster. So we, a lot of times the problem is that we as patients expect treatment or a recovery program to cure us of all of our problems when in reality they give us tools to manage those problems and this was certainly the case for me in many situations you know at one point 
I was dealing with anxiety and anxiety attacks and panic attacks. And I went to therapy for a long time trying to, uh, trying to cure that problem. And I, I, part of the issue was I was looking for a cure when in reality, the doctor that I was working with was giving me tools to handle these things when they came up. And what I didn't understand at the time was that had I used those tools in the way he had prescribed them to me, had I practiced those tools in the way he had prescribed them to me, then more than likely I would have succeeded at uh, learning how to handle the anxiety and the panic when it arose and then decreasing the frequency of it. As it was, I didn't do that. I expected the doctor to do the work and I expected to be able to just float along and all of a sudden be cured. So, uh, you know, when we go to a, when we go to a lot of doctors, you know, we expect to be prescribed a pill or some kind of ointment or something that we use and it cures whatever's going on with us. But therapy is a lot like um, the kind of is a lot like physical therapy as well, where you're given exercises that you have to engage in on a daily basis and you have to use on a daily basis in order to get the effects that the doctor or the therapist is looking for. It's one of those situations where the work involved is not one-sided. In fact, the work that I do as a patient is disproportionate to the work that the doctor does. The doctor with me is going to spend that time in the room, an hour, maybe a week, an hour, a month, and then some time working on my case. I need to use those tools all the time. The, the tools that I'm learning there, I have to use those all the time in order for this treatment to be effective. Once I realized that, and I didn't realize it, unfortunately, I was, I was at a very bad point when I realized that therapy was for getting tools and it was my job to take those and apply them. Once I realized that, then my life started changing quite a bit and I was able to, and I was very fortunate that I found in, uh, when I was in residential treatment for my addiction, I found a therapist who, and a counselor who would give me homework assignments, very specific assignments. And so I could take that and combine doing those homework assignments with the exercises that she was giving me to deal with the things that were causing me problems. Um, these exercises included uh, doing some very objective analysis of problems in my life that were causing me a lot of fear. The exercises that she gave me included grounding exercises where you use tactile or other sensations to help you uh, to help you ground yourself in the moment. Um, relaxation exercises, where which are similar to meditation, mindfulness meditation, to help you bring down some of the physical response to external stressors that can cause anxiety. Um, and all uh, and the the journaling uh, was the other one that was really big for me. Positive affirmations. She helped me shape positive affirmations that I could use to help myself in the morning get my brain into a better spot because I, I was waking up so frustrated and scared and depressed in the morning that I needed to use positive affirmations where I stood in front of a mirror and smiled at myself and said all these nice things to myself. I needed to do that. Um, and I, I always thought that kind of stuff was goofy, but it, it rewires some things in your brain to do that, and it helps you make it through the day. But I had to be willing to do those kinds of things on a daily and sometimes hourly basis in order to get what I was what I was looking for out of the experience of therapy. So 
the important thing to remember is therapy is not necessarily a situation where you go in and just talk about your problems for an hour and then you're somehow cured and that's it. And it's not the kind of situation where, you know, you necessarily want to, for the rest of your life, have to see someone every week to discuss your problems. What you really want to see is that as you and your therapist figure out the tools that work best for you, and as you become more proficient at using those tools, the frequency of your visits can decrease so that you're seeing your therapist to maintain your toolkit rather than just going and rehashing the same things over and over again. And if you are in a situation where you find yourself doing that, where you find yourself just going to a therapist and talking about the same old things time and time again, it's okay to look for a new therapist and to look for someone else who can actually help you make progress because that's the other thing you should be seeing in therapy is progress. If you aren't, then it could be that you aren't you you haven't found the right fit yet. It could be that you need to reevaluate how much of the work you're putting in on a daily daily basis. Because like with anything in recovery and like with anything in life, your results and your success are directly proportionate to the amount of work that you put in to make things happen. That's it for today. I'll be back here tomorrow with more. In the meantime, have a good one.